Hi there, I'm Logan Medish, and this is High Caliber History. Today we're going to take a look at a couple early 20th century revolvers with unconventional attachments, courtesy of Morphe Auctions. First up is a Harrington and Richardson revolver that apparently never heard the phrase, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Between 1901 and 1917, Harrington and Richardson built approximately 2,000 of these knife revolvers, known as the Automatic Ejecting Knife Model. Between 1901 and 1917, Harrington and Richardson built approximately 2,000 of these revolvers, known as the Automatic Ejecting Knife Model. The name comes from the fact that the guns were top break designs that automatically ejected spent casings when the gun was broken open. Those made between 1901 and 1904 were chambered for black powder cartridges, while those made between 1905 and 1917 were made for smokeless powder. Offered as a 6-shot in 32 or a 5-shot in 38, the catalog only lists nickel as the available finish, but some blued models have been observed. Guns that are blued and or chambered for 32 caliber are the rarer of the variations. Regardless of caliber or color, both had 4-inch barrels with a 2 and one quarter inch knife. The knife deploys simply by pulling it down and swinging it up to the front where it locks in place with a catch below the barrel. To store the blade, you manipulate the catch, free the blade, and then swing it back under the barrel where it secures under its own weight. In a 1907 advertisement, the knife revolver was listed with a sales price of $6.75. Adjusted for inflation, that comes out to a little less than $190 in 2020. The other gun we're looking at is an Ivor Johnson second model safety automatic. This particular one is the hammer model, but they also made a hammerless model. Either way, both are designed for black powder cartridges. The gun itself is unremarkable. It's the grip attachment that sets it apart. What is known today as the Bourne Knuckle Duster, it appears only on second model safety automatic revolvers between 1906 and 1908, with approximately 7,000 manufactured. All of the guns came from the factory with this attachment as special orders. It was not available as a standard production piece. As the description of grip attachment implies, this was not something that was integral to the frame like the skull crusher found on Merwin Hulbert revolvers. Instead, these were attached to the frame with three screws, one on the butt and two on the front strap. The guns were offered in 32 or 38 caliber, and like the H&R knife revolver, nickel was the standard finish, with blued guns being rarer. The patent for this pistol grip was first issued to George C. Bourne of Worcester, Massachusetts on May 10, 1904, which is the date you'll see on the units themselves. The patent was reissued on July 10, 1906, and was assigned this time to Mary Elizabeth Johnson, Ivor Johnson's widow. It's believed that she paid George Bourne $1,200 for the use of his patent. Guns equipped with these attachments cost an additional $1, bringing the total in 1907 to $6.50 for a hammer model and $7.50 for a hammerless model. That comes out to $180 and $208 approximately today in 2020. Interestingly, Ivor Johnson never marketed this option as a knuckle duster, which is what collectors see it as today. Instead, it was only ever referred to as a grip attachment. Bourne never intended for it to be a secondary defensive weapon. Rather, he saw it as a way to get a better grip on guns with smaller frame sizes. This is backed up by the fact that Bourne patented at least three other types of grip attachments. One was similar to this model, but utilized an open hook for the pinky finger instead of the closed loop. Another clamped to the barrel and made a sort of awkward vertical foregrip. And the final design was for rifles and shotguns, and it combined a finger loop grip and rear sight that attached to the barrel to provide different length of pull with the support hand. Neither of these ideas really caught on at the time, but their spirit can still be seen today in pinky mag extenders on semi-auto pistols, and the novel pistol bayonets that attach via frame rail segments. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving a thumbs up, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel. Also, please follow me over on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and contemplate becoming a patron over on Patreon. Links to all of those are in the description. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.